Now here's a really sad thing. This same basil right here who killed his best friend out of jealousy who was Michael the third who died right here at the end. This same guy just like Constantine just this this kills me. This same guy is credited with starting a golden age for Byzantium. Not exactly the words the Bible's using to describe him. After the eclipses of those days. Oh Helios Scotis de Setai. Kai e Selene U doze Tofegos Autis. The sun darkened and the moon won't give any light. That's how the Bible's describing him. Basil was a Macedonian. He starts a new dynasty. Whatever the heck history says about him and all the praises that are put on him, just like the praises put on Constantine, okay? That's not what the Bible thinks. God, because this is his word. That's not a compliment. Okay? So... God is being very satirical here. I hope you get that. If you go to look up Basil, Basil the first, starter of the uh, I forget what Macedonian dynasty they call it. Oh, it was a golden age under him, and everything came to fruition, and all the Byzantine Empire entered its glory, and all its art, and all its flourishing, and yada yada yada. Doesn't last. Nothing ever does. But it's satire. Do you see the satire? The very thing that humans say about it. God's saying, uh no. Darkening of the sun, meaning darkening no Bible doctrine. The moon won't give its light. Meaning it's the darkest period. They're not being enlightened. So this is running from 867, really 868 here, to 890, 889. And of course there are no keywords, there's no center. It's part of the total nexus because it's between verse 23 and verse 26. But not. So you can go read up on Basil on your own. The Bible is saying not good. And you'll be surprised at just how positive the reports are about this guy. And keep going and the stars were will be actually falling from heaven now that's a euphemism but in a way it's really not because <coughs> excuse me stars are nicknames for angels because their bodies are made of light when it says stars fall from the heavens Okay, that language is actually used for Satan in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. And of course, it's used for Satan again in Revelation 9 and 12. Yeah, 12. Angels falling from heaven. We all know that's not good. All right, and we're past Basil at this point, but it's a, it's a dynasty, okay? I don't want to spend much time on it because 
you can go read it yourself now that I've given you so much about the Nexus period. Because i got to go to the, the, this is the second half of the Nexus. The whole Nexus period goes all the way to verse 26. And I want to skip some of it. This is the part I'm skipping. You can see why. Because you can just read about this in the description that you're given. It's just the opposite. Alright. So, I want you to notice the confluence here. Michael the Third, who was not, you know, he, he allowed himself to um, be dictated to by people close to him. He nonetheless, in his lifetime, stuff happened to him such that he wanted the conversion of and it just so happened that there was a convergence of Louis the German and Moravia which resulted in the convergence of from this point 860 some pagan Russians stealing Bibles and taking them back with them just in time for the conversion of the Moravians via a Bible written in their own language and therefore the conversion of the Bulgars who are related and the conversion of the Russians who are related okay there's there's a lot of argument about you know what kind of peoples are these were the people that came from the north of the same people because they tend to call them Slavs but it isn't really just that it's really hard to explain it's some it may be a sort of a mixture all right, because this is long before the Mongol raids. All right, you can call people that are a mix of the Mongol raids and the people who were there at the time. You can call them Slavs, because because there's just there's certain Asian characteristics in common. But this is before that. That was the good of Michael's reign, and and that was pretty much. I mean, he tried. He didn't have much time. You know, he only started in 56. Alright? Because he was only out from his mother's thumb in 56. But he got out the wrong way and he dies the wrong way. Meanwhile, God makes good on the bad. In a very humorous way. Okay? But, and this is why it's not seventh here. It wasn't good for Byzantium. It should have been, it could have been, but it wasn't. Because of all the junk that was going on there. In other words, you know, they're alive when all these conversions are going on amongst the Bulgars and the Moravians and the Russians. They're seeing it happen. So why didn't they get serious about God as a result of seeing it? I mean, you're talking about, you know, thousands upon thousands of people converting just because they find out about this book. And, and you, you don't, it doesn't dawn on you that, ooh, maybe this is miraculous because so many people are doing it. And so maybe we should get serious about God. Oh no, they're too busy fighting with each other over who's top dog. So it doesn't seven for them. And instead, what happens? Oh, everything goes dark. So just as the lights are turning on in Bulgaria, in Moravia, and Russia, the lights are turning out in Byzantium. All due to this guy and his progeny. And not only that, but it becomes satanic. The stars fall out of heaven. Yeah, because if they're going dark, that's opportunity for the demon boys to play. Because after all, there are a whole bunch of Bibles still in Byzantium. We want to do everything we can to get rid of them. Icon worship is one way to get rid of them by letting them just sit there and nobody reads. But wouldn't it be better to just destroy them altogether because at these very years, interest is going higher to get these Bibles, to get the Greek Bibles, in, get this, Europe, and especially, this is the killer of all, in Spain. The Arabs that had conquered Spain a hundred years ago, we're mollifying and modifying everything 
and there's a rise of a of a whole dynasty here and it'll especially be in 928 which is I'm going to come up to because that's one of our key points there's going to be there's a rise of sort of like an Arab conversion too where they don't want to do their little piracy and nasty thing that they've been doing which is their tradition and their hallmark they pride themselves on being rapers and raiders and stuff like that they really do they pride themselves on stealing well once they've been around the Christians for a while they started to modify their thinking on that and they started becoming kinder gentler so much so that they actually befriended the Jews in Spain even more than the Christians, because the Christians were trying to take them back over. And they formed alliances with the Jews. And the Jews flourished under them in Spain. And there, that a lot of our manuscripts and the teaching and all this good stuff starts coming out from Spain. And of course, Spain has trade with Byzantium. So if you can darken Byzantium and make it satanic... That cuts off that line of getting Bible information in and out. Because don't forget, Byzantium is in the East. It's got control, sort of. There's a religious understanding with the Arabs there, too. It's got some kind of control in Jerusalem. And it's got, it's got the Arabs at a standoff. So there's a sort of uneasy peace between them that's now about 100 years old. And in addition to that, Russia, Bulgaria, and Moravia, which are positive to God, are north. So you can cut off from Spain to Byzantium, cut off the flow of Bible info at Byzantium, then it, how hard is that going to be to make it go north? Because it was a pretty easy sail. You just sail from the Mediterranean up through the Bosphorus and you're there Jack but if Byzantium is dark how are you gonna get there over land that's a lot harder and the two principal ways that people got Bible information was through Paris and through Milan in addition to through Spain and the people who did it in Spain were doing it because people were willing to pay good money for the Hebrew manuscripts and they were willing to pay good money to get the Greek manuscripts because that was lucrative trade for them up north to France. You cut that off, oh boy, you make inroads. Now, at this very time, there starts to be another influx of northerners going south called the Vikings. They got other names too, Northmen, Norsemen. And they suddenly get interested in the Bible during this time too. So cutting off Byzantium where the Bible manuscripts are is really important strategically. And that's basically what you're tell, you're, what you're, what's being said here. When you got apocalyptic language like this, the sun is darkened and the moon won't give, out her, give her light. When you got that happening, it's talking about Bible going dark. And stars falling from the heavens, that's talking about demonic activity. Alright, so should you be too surprised that it sevens again at 889, which is 929, 919, 919, 889. This really bothered me when I first got the meter because I had to redo it. When I got to this, I'm like, what? What is it about this period? That was before I knew that it was relating to Byzantine history rather than Western. Look at the text. And all the powers in the heavens are shaken. Yeah, because, see, Satan wins in the trial if nobody wants Bible. And since it's collected mainly in the East, because the West is still living on its Latin, this time from, from Jerome, but if they can stop the original from getting out, stop it at Spain, stop it at Byzantium, then yeah, the powers of the heavens are going to be shaking because Satan might actually win in the trial. Now, it's marked with a 70, and you'll notice the difference is 70, that's the number of voting 
history is divided into 490 plus 70 plus 490 ever since Adam's fall. And at this point, we're getting close to the end of a 1050. But we're not at a historical 70. We're at a special 70 voting period because of the darkness that enters with Basil. Sun darkened. Moon won't give out its light. The stars fall. Demonic activity. And the powers of heavens are shaken. Yeah. Because everything's depending on those Bibles that are sitting there in Byzantium getting out. And the threat of them not getting out is really strong during this period. So I think what I'm going to ask you to do is read up on the history of Basil. And by the time I next show this video, I'll put a link in here. Of Basil and his friends up until 923 because our next verse 26 nexus is coming up in verse 26 and it's going to be real important to understand why is this second advent language used and the guy that it's used for himself is a usurper named Romanus why is he the guy who's treated with such nice language because he's not nice. What well, what's the story here? How did this happen? So read up through 923 929 rather 919, I'm sorry. 919. Read up through 919 before you go to the next increment. Peace out.